So what's up with all this beeping? You know, Morse code seems to be a mystery to a lot of people, but it's fundamentally just a method of encoding every letter in the alphabet, plus numbers and some punctuation, as two pieces of data, two sounds actually, one three times longer than the other. If you were to speak the two sounds out loud, one would sound like dit, the other one sound like da. That's it. That's all you've got to know. Two sounds, one three times longer than the other. And you thought this would be hard. Pah. So, Morse code. Why is he called Morse code? Well, Samuel Morse was a painter. A painter, you say? Yep, a portrait painter. Ah, you're thinking he must have painted numerology into his portraits, thus developing a code. No, nothing so cloak and dagger. The motivation for his invention was due to a sad event in his life. See, while he was painting the portrait of the Marquis de Lafayette in Washington, D.C., he received a message delivered from a horseback rider telling him that his wife at home in New Haven, Connecticut was sick. Now, the message was a few days old at this point. He then received another message the following day that informed him that she had died. He immediately returned home, but she was already buried. Morse was heartbroken that his wife had been ill for days and he couldn't receive a message. He decided to explore a means of long-distance communication. Along with his assistant, Alfred Vail, they developed the primary language used in telegraphy across the world and to design the mechanism to deliver the messages of Morse code over long distances. That was a question mark. So why? Why learn Morse code? Well, it's been in use for over 160 years, the longest of any electrical coding system. Morse code is still transmitted by some automated aviation beacons in the U.S. and the Navy. It's still employed in signal lamps for radio silence operations. Some other armed forces use it regularly on a day-to-day -day basis. And Morse code is still taught by the Air Force at Goodfellow Base in Texas. So that's kind of cool, but the main reason you want to learn Morse code is for use in amateur radio. CW, or continuous wave, that's what CW stands for, is the most energy efficient mode of electronic wireless communication that doesn't require computerized encoding or decoding. So in the case of Morse code, the human is the modem. CW allows radio operators to communicate over the world with low power, called QRP. CW's Power density and simple transmitter receiver requirements provide for a simplified station ideal for emergency operations. I carry a small battery powered radio and some wire and I can talk around the world. Learn Morse code. So, your first exposure to Morse code was probably some chart that showed you a combination of dots and dashes that made up characters. That might encourage you to listen to individual dits and dahs to learn code, but it's a trap. There's a part of your brain that counts and another part that handles language. The part that counts quickly hits a limit as to how fast it can count what you're hearing. But the part that handles language is designed to interpret and transmit communication at incredible speeds. And the language part of your brain works with sound, not sight. So you have to approach learning Morse code as a language by the way it sounds. It has a sound. It has a beautiful sound. An A sounds like da-da, da-da. Say it out loud a couple times. Da-da, da-da. Go ahead. Don't be embarrassed. People around you will simply think you finally lost it and pull out that power of attorney they've been keeping in the drawer. Okay, you're saying, da-da, right? If so, you're hearing the letter A. Congratulations, you have just learned the first letter of the alphabet in Morse code. So a C in Morse code sounds like da 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 It's got a beautiful rhythm when you hear it. Right? 
Go ahead, shout it out. Da -da 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 -da. You've got nothing to lose at this point. So, if you toil around with learning Morse code, and you've got some visual chart that's showing you dots and dashes, shred that thing. Go ahead, do it. Oh, wait. Did you shred it? Okay, all right, let's keep going. Methodology. So, there are many ways to learn Morse code. There are some well-established methods accepted by ARRL, and I'm going to describe uh, one of them to you. It's worked for me. It's worked for lots of hams, and I feel like it's probably one of the best ways to learn Morse code. Learning it with the sound of the letters at the full speed that you want to execute Morse code is very important. And let me give you some audio uh, representations to help you understand that. Okay, you may be tempted to learn Morse code slowly and think, I'll speed up after I've learned it slow. So, when I got my general license, it was still required to pass a Morse code test. But they had dropped the speed requirement down to five words a minute, which is really slow. It's so slow that if you try to have a conversation with somebody at five words a minute, well, just imagine if I only said five words in a minute. So that was five words in like 15 seconds, and it was boring. So here's the problem. If you learn the characters and the numbers and the punctuation slowly at five words a minute, they sound sort of like this. So this would be a K. That's a K. And this is an M. And if you listen to those, the dit and the da's are so slow and separated, you start to count them. So, for instance, if I was sending the letter H, at five words a minute. I'd be tempted to count those dits by sending the S. It's the dits are coming so slow, you naturally sort of want to count them. If you do that, you'll never in improve your speed. So, what's recommended is something called the Farnsworth method. I don't remember who Mr. Farnsworth was, but the idea was learning the sound of the letters at the target speed that you want to operate, but then keeping the spacing between the letters slow so that your brain has time to process them. So that was five words a minute. This is about 20 words a minute for an S, for an H. You might say, oh, that's too fast. It's too fast for you to count. Yes, and that's good, because um, what you're wanting to do is learn things now by their sound. Now the K has a sound to it. You're not counting parts. An M has a sound to it, and that's good. So the Farnsworth method says learn your characters at your target speed. Now let's, I would recommend you start with a minimum of a 20 word per minute target speed for your characters. But you're going to put spacing between the characters as slow as you need to go to recognize them. And what that means is rather than if I were to send the word Morse at full speed at, at say 20 words a minute, as opposed to 20 words per minute character speed, but a 5 word per minute Farnsworth speed, now the characters are spaced out far enough to where it's given your brain time to recognize the sound of the letters and put them together. And that's the best way to start. You're going to learn your characters at target speed. You're going to put as much space between them as you need. 
and then you simply start taking space out between the letters and that's also going to change uh, things because you're going to go from just hearing letters and writing them down and putting them together to the point where you're hearing the letters together in a word and you begin to recognize the words you, you know that that's a the of you'll just start to recognize certain words because you're hearing the characters squeeze together and then Morse truly becomes a language So where's a good place to learn Morse code? I made very good progress at the website LearnCW Online. It's called LearnCW Online. The URL is lcwo.net. He uses the Farnsworth method combined with the Koch methodology. Koch is the order in which you learn characters. It helps you to know when you're proceeding and really helps you keep track of how well you're progressing. He's got great tools there. He will introduce you to the letter K. And the M. First. And he's going to put 10 word per minute spacing between them as they're sent. And it'll alternate sending K's and M's after you've gotten used to the sound of K's. And the M's. And then have you practice copying those? K, M, K, 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 M, M, K. And he'll put them in groups. And when your recognition level, you'll be typing in on a computer what you hear, when your recognition level reaches 90% or better, then he's going to introduce you to the next letter. He'll give you a K, an M, and then a U. So the U will be the next letter and he'll proceed through the whole Koch sequence. It's about 40 characters total, so there'll be 40 lessons. And when you're done, you'll have a very good comprehension of all the characters in Morse code. And you'll be able to copy them via mixed groups. Now, there are further steps beyond just learning to copy the characters, and we'll talk about that in a subsequent video. But if you're just beginning to learn Morse code, or if you're wanting to learn Morse code, I highly recommend the Learn CW Online, lcwo.net, as a good place to get started and start your practice out. And I'm a firm believer in learning to copy code. Copy means be able to know what you're hearing and write it down or type it before you progress to sending code. Because you need to know what code sounds like before you practice sending it. At least I, I believe that. Now some people think you ought to practice sending and copying at the same time. I think there's two, they're two separate skills because you're going to be doing two separate things and I'll talk about that in another video. If you're thinking about learning Morse code, do it. It's a blast. It is so much fun to learn. Um, it puts you in sort of a unique and nerdy club. Uh, it's got uses beyond amateur radio, obviously. It's just a an interesting method of communication. It's got great history and it's just fun. So give it a shot and let me know how it goes.